Conversations That Matter podcast. My name is John Harris. Uh, this is going to be a short podcast. I want to remind everyone before I get started on it that um, today is pretty much, this is the day before Juan Riesco is coming. Paint the wall black. We're screening it. He's going to speak. I'll be there. Liberty University tomorrow night, 7 p.m. Link is in the info section if you want to sign up for that. Uh, hopefully there's some seats still available. Um, but if you know anyone at Liberty, send this to them. It is tomorrow night at 7. There's some snacks or I don't know, dessert, something will be provided. I know that. And um, it's going to be good. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. So um, n- the topic at hand, it'll be really short because it's just one clip, but Woke Preacher Clips tagged me in this, and I missed it for some reason until someone sent it to me. So they tagged me in this. This is from February. Is it February 3rd or March 3rd? I, I put Feb- It must be February 3rd. I, that can't be, though. I thought it was March 3rd. I'm going to have to go back and look. It is February 3rd. Okay, so it's from a February. So this is an older older and and this this may not that old it's from this year but this is a uh, chapel message um, that Matt Hall who's a provost at the Southern Baptist Theological Seminary flagship seminary for the Southern Baptist Convention where Al Mohler's the president is the provost that's that's his role there big role I mean he's kind of the one the logical one to take over if Al Mohler leaves and um, so (laughs) this So basically, Woke Preacher Clips on Facebook tagged me and insinuated I was one of the ones he was talking about. And I watched this and I thought, you know, I think he is one of the ones I'm talking about. And um, and, and I don't know for sure. There's certainly more than just me. But um, someone sent this to me as well and said, you know, John, I think he's talking about you here. And um, and this is, you know, I, I wouldn't normally do this. In fact, this happened another time that was more obvious and I didn't even talk about it because it was just, it, it didn't serve any purpose really. But th- this one kind of serves a purpose because it's illustrative of something. This is the way, and I, and I don't know, it, put comment in the info section if you think you know what this is. I'm going to try to describe it for you because it's beyond the quote unquote 11th commandment, thou shall not speak evil of another Southern Baptist or another evangelical. This is, it's beyond that. There's this, uh, there's, there's kind of like unspoken set of rules and that have to do with the way that you talk about others with which you have a disagreement about. And basically it's you beat around the bush verbally, but you try to communicate emotionally to your audience exactly what you're saying and exactly who the bad guys are and lead them down the garden path to having the same, to thinking the same thing that you think without having to draw a lot of specifics without having to get specific without having to name names especially i don't know what that is but it is so characteristic of southern baptists uh in elite positions and it's not just southern baptists i've realized this is greater evangelicalism has this problem and i've started to wonder like is this even an evangelical thing like where did this come from like this this has to be more than just evangelical like where is this because like i mean i've been in secular academic settings i don't really remember this you know maybe it is there and i just was oblivious because i wasn't paying attention uh i mean obviously politically speaking people name names all the time and you know rake each other over coals sometimes but if if you have a position at a big evangelical institution generally you're not going to be naming names much but you will still talk about people it's it's kind of um it's just, I, don't, I don't even know what word to use. I don't even know how to describe this. It's just so outside of my wheelhouse because I'm, I'm just pretty direct. It's like, you know, <laughs> hey, that person said this and I disagree. And here's why I disagree. Point A, B, C, D. Uh, but, you know, this whole like, let's tar and feather someone because of something they said, you know, when they were kids or something they believe in this other area. And we're going to bring that in. And then we're not even going to say their name. We'll talk, but we'll describe so many things about them so people know exactly who we're talking about and we'll kind of like do this whole like this dance like i don't get those things i don't understand them. i don't understand the lack of being direct because i'm just very direct like here's what you said here's where i disagree um so someone might have to help me with this but so i can describe it but i can't quite uh maybe if i thought about it long enough i could explain it but matt hall <laughs> he exemplifies it here whatever it is that i'm referring to matt hall exemplifies it and we're gonna watch this it is from a chapel like i said from february 3rd it was interesting in the intro to this chapel i'll say this before i play it al Mohler introduces matt hall and says all these glowing things about him and one of the things he says he's like well he's an elder at and he sort of catches himself he's like well he's, he's been involved at his church it, it's that's what it looked like at least 
because um, my understanding is that Matt Hall's actually not an elder. And I, I've made this point before. He's, he's not an elder at a church, from my understanding right now. But he's teaching people how to be good elders. Uh, it doesn't. I, it doesn't seem to add up to me. That's one of the. Th I, I'm just saying that because I noticed Al Mohler kind of seeming like he's catching himself at the beginning of the intro of this video. Um, but the video itself, when, when it started, is on. It's a sermon on um, Genesis, the end of Genesis, where uh, or it's Joseph forgiving his brothers. I think what is that fifty. Here's what he has to say, though, in the midst of that, in, in the story about Joseph's forgiveness and Jesus says to, to forgive. And then Matt Hall launches into this kind of this. this it, it, if you listen to it, it's kind of like, where did that come from? Here we go. Oh, but if you have experienced the pain that Joseph has experienced, you know that the reality of this world is there are many who will do you wrong with evil intent. Indeed, there are some who will plan evil for you, against you. I wish I could tell you that the sharp knives of evil plots and conspiracies were limited to the realm of politics. I wish I could tell you that they were only known in the halls and the corridors of corporate offices. But far too often, they even show up in church life. So he's saying there's these conspiracies, just like Joseph's brothers. That's what it's like. They sold him into slavery, I guess. It was pretty drastic. Um, and, uh, and that's happening in the church. They're, they're acting like Joseph's brothers. Well, what's he talking about? Who, who's doing that? There are some people who will despise you, who will try to pull themselves up by pulling you down. It may be motivated by resentment. It may be motivated by envy. It may just be unmitigated and unexplainable hatred. But it's evil, and God sees it. And he's right about that. I mean, does anyone disagree with that, that there's people who do that on your job? And um, yeah, of course, obviously, uh, that's true. Um, so let's keep going here. You will be slandered and accused sometimes even by those who profane the name of Christ in their sin to try to legitimize their attacks. You'll be betrayed and hurt by those that you had trusted to have your back. Folks will lie about you and then lie to you. But God is not blind to that suffering, and he himself will surely judge righteously. I think, I think the reason that some people thought, okay, Matt Hall is sort of taking a turn to talk about himself is because of how specific he gets here and all these different scenarios he's talking about and his expressions seem to indicate, okay, he's talking about things he's lived through with experience. He's talking from experience right now. He's, he's not talking about the text itself. This is, this is experience he's had. Our God is a God of justice. Odetta had it right all those years ago when she sang, you can run on for a long time, but sooner or later, God's going to cut you down. But you and I can leave that judgment to God. So I have to, I have to ask the question here. I mean, th does this apply to all the, the, the Christians who have been slandered? Uh, nameless, you know, faceless, but the, well, some of them aren't nameless and faceless. Some of them are from history, actually. Uh, I mean, Southern Baptist Theological Seminary does this a lot with the founders of their seminary uh, and wants to, you know, use them as the whipping post for all kinds of things. It constantly comes up um, and because and they're not here to defend themselves or, you know, why they made the decisions they did at the times in which they lived or anything like that. Um, the, so they will mention, I should, I shouldn't, I should retract what I said earlier. They will name names when it comes to people who are dead <laughs> or Paige Patterson. He's, he's an okay name, I think, to name. Uh, but um, in general, they don't, uh, they, they don't do that to people who are living and can defend themselves and, and that kind of thing. But when, they, when you promote things, you know, like uh, when, when Matt Hall has said, like, you know, he's going to peel back and show everyone what they thought was this uh, tradition in their heathen, in their family, uh, in their church, this tradition of faithfulness, he's going to show them the rotting corpse of white supremacy, and that's actually what characterizes their families and their traditions. I mean, d is that an example of slandering someone, or does that just not count? I mean, is God going to judge that too? Things that Matt Hollis said that he has not apologized for, that he has not retracted, he's only given these vague statements of, I don't agree with critical race theory, um, 
and and because it's atheistic or materialistic or naturalistic or something like that, which has nothing to do uh, with the ethics that he's imported and preached uh, in churches and at southeastern or, or sorry southern uh, for many years. I mean, that God's going to judge that too. And I I just I have to just remind people who are watching this. You know, Matt Hall's not his hands aren't clean in this, um, but he's anyway. He's, as a general principle, what he's saying is very true. God is going to bring every act into judgment, whether good or evil. It says that in Ecclesiastes. Um, and it's true that there are people that will cut other people down for the sake of their own self-promotion. Now, again, we don't exactly know who he's talking about, but you know, we know he's talking about from some kind of experience. That's what it sounds like, at least. Let's keep going. You and I, brother or sister, you and I are called to mercy. God's people need to be reminded of this truth in every generation. Maybe we need it, particularly at this present moment in American Christianity. There are those on the pol this this po this particular moment. Now, why? Because there are those on the political political right and the political left who want you to believe that this world is all that there is. And unfortunately, and, and I, it's so vague. People. I mean, there's secularists, right? There, there are people who believe that, and, and, and they do exist. I mean, the political right's pretty big, the political left's pretty big, but the fundamental philosophies of the right and the left, only one of them is built for a more utopian here um, on earth, let's create something that is not actually possible to create because of sin. Uh, that would be the left. And then the right traditionally has been, uh, they actually believe um, in some sense of divine re rewards and punishments, and there is no utopia. That's kind of the fundamental actually underpinning of conservative philosophy. There actually is no utopia. So we shouldn't try to achieve that. We shouldn't try to achieve um, equality. There's such thing as hierarchy. It's actually inevitable. And uh, what we need to do is, given what we know about human nature and its sinfulness, how do we create a system which reduces the impact of that sin? And the separation of power is part of that. Um, uh, free markets part of that. Uh, this, you know, is the kind of thing that conservatism is about. And th I hear this. You know, I heard this at Southeastern too. I remember Bruce Ashford preached a sermon like this. You know, it's you know the right and left, like kind of almost like they're they're equally. You know, there's no. Uh, you look at their philosophy. Uh, their, the philosophies underpinning them are actually very different. And so, no, I, I disagree with Matt Hall here. Um, but how does he? You know, he's putting himself and the people in the room. You know, we're in the center here. We're not in the political right. We're not in the political left. It's this third way thing. There are even those within Christianity who would appeal to your basest instincts, to your outrage and your fear, calling you to rage against your neighbor, to take justice in your own hands, to execute vengeance where you've been wronged, and to place your hope in endless culture wars and skirmishes. Now remember, he's saying the right and left. So culture wars, endless culture wars, like that's somehow wrong. Let's pour water on that. It's, um, it, you, man, uh, it, it almost sounds like it's this pietism that, well, it's more holy to to just not get in your hands dirty and get involved in those things. Now, of course you can get too angry and stuff, but there are things to legitimately be having a righteous indignation about and to work towards, you know, abortion obviously being the top of that list to work towards ending, to work towards uh, reducing, curbing. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. And people who talk about those things, uh, you know, who have legitimate concerns are totally in uh, within the boundaries of, of uh, all that is right and good to be able to call attention to evil that's happening and try to address it. I want you to notice, though, we're not talking about Joseph anymore, are we? We're not talking about, this is, we're straying here. He's talking about politics. He's putting himself in the center as the moderate. He's chiding now people that get too political, essentially, and, and work on anger and fear and those kinds of things. And then watch what he says. And they all stand to gain from your outrage and your fear. And in case you're wondering, they're happy to give you the link for their Patreon account or to have you register for their conference at a discounted rate if you register today. But nowhere do we see this in the Word of God. Well, there it is. There it is. Patreon registering for discounts uh, at conferences. I mean, who who could he possibly be talking about with Patreons and conferences? I mean, does it sounds like it's? I mean, Eddie Robles, myself, Founders Ministries, perhaps. 
Um, that, that's who it sounds like he's probably referring to. I, I don't know for 100% because he didn't say the names of those people. But let's compare it to the story of Joseph. The story of Joseph isn't that there are just, you know, motiv- it's all motivated by profit. And, um, and of course, they're not trying to, you know, they're, it's not like they're just, let's stir everyone up to get angry so we can make money. That's, it, he's kind of, he's, he's not in the story of Joseph anymore. Uh, but it's, it's, he's talking specifically, and it's not political either. The story of Joseph isn't like, is there some political contest going on? And there, that's part of it. No, he, he's completely deviated talking about something else. And it's about the current political situation and it's people. And, and, and he says from the right and left, I mean, you it, usually if, if they're going to criticize conservatives in general, big evangelical institutional leaders, etc., generally they, well, Tim Keller does this all the time. He'll talk about individualism, the right, but he has to talk about individualism, uh, individualism of the left too, in the same breath. He has to critique them both and, and do it from this kind of neutral stance where he transcends those things. He's kind of like above those things. It's actually kind of a, it's, you know, mo- it's that moderate thing, but it's not, it, it's, it's actually, it's more than moderate. It's, where we're not in either of those categories and, and the, the, the dirt from, from those categories and, and the sandboxes they're playing in, we're, we're in our own clean sandbox where we don't get that kind of dirt on ourselves. And, um, and, and of course, though, it's, so, it, it, it's not applying the same standard to the institution that, that he's working at. Uh, I mean, does, could you say that about the Southern Baptist Theological Seminary? Do they do they have money? I mean, do they, do do they have people that are donating to them? Do they have students who pay money to for tuition, or is it all free? Um, I mean, is it just the expenses of the school that they pay, or do they actually have some extra? Are they paying their professors well? You, you see how this works, and if they're ever uh, discredited, or if uh, let's say videos from the past that are now deleted by the school, that are erased by the school of Matt Hall. Uh, and Jarvis Williams and others, if those videos were just posted, you know, hey, here's what these people have said, and it doesn't reflect well on the school, um, is the school, what's the, what's, how does the school react to that? Is the school concerned about its, its donors? Are they making phone calls to their donors? And, um, are they, and I happen to know somewhat of the answer to some of these questions, which is why I'm asking them. Um, are they, uh, concerned about the reputation of their school, you know, so much? Are they getting involved in the political battle that they find themselves in because they entered it when they posted those things and said those things, advocating um, ideas consistent with critical race theory? In some cases, actually, we're explicitly saying and attributing it to critical race theory. Um, you know, <laughs> that that's the thing that doesn't make any sense. Matt Hall has entered political debates in his own videos, that many of them have been scrubbed. Some of them are still online. You can still see some of the montages of things he said. Um, he entered that, you know, over a course of years, teaching there. And then when someone, when different people have called him on it, um, the response has been to sort of to, to, to not actually respond to their actual uh, concerns, not his actual teachings. The the response has always been to deflect, to deny to uh, disguise um, smoke and mirror stuff. It's always been, I'm actually against critical race theory because, and then it usually something to do with materialism, atheism, naturalism, uh, you know, uh, cause it's, it's roots, it's philosophical foundations are bad, which was never the question. It was always the ethics. It was always the uh, epistemology and the ethics. It wasn't the uh, metaphysical foundation. Um, and, and so, it's 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 a deflection. It's not directly answering. Um, he's been involved in this. That's the thing I'm trying to say. That's the thing I'm trying to say. Like Matt, like you're are you going to take to take your own advice? Like apply what you're saying to your own institution, and think through. I mean, honestly, I, mean, I don't think Matt Hall will ever see this, but honestly, if he does, if he is listening, you know, think through the things you've even heard and seen in backdoor meetings, and. Are those things really above board? Is there a concern at your school um, among some of the people there at high levels uh, concerning finances and concerning looking a certain way politically? And um, I mean, has there been in the past, have even things come out of your mouth to drum up uh, hatred or I should say um, anger of some kind to use, I think the word you used, it has, have you ever done that? Has Jarvis Williams ever done it? Has Curtis Woods ever done that? 
um, against certain demographics, certain groups of people, uh, whether it's white people or you know specifically certain kinds of white people. I, I don't know. Uh, I mean, it, has that ever happened? And and I think what you'll find is if you start asking those questions, if you start applying his own standard to himself in the institution he works at, then it would, it would at least give someone pause that, you know what, I'm trying to apply this to other people that have Patreons and discounts for conferences. <laughs> but you know what, Southeastern also um, has its own money-making machine going on. They have their own announcements about their tuition and, um, and, and the things that cost money there. So it, it's, it's, I just want to put the shoe on the other foot. And uh, so it is a short episode, but I, I just thought it was instructive in, in some ways or representative of the way I've seen many times big evangelical leaders respond to criticism. Um, and I even put a question mark. Is he responding to criticism? We don't really know. But if, if he is, this would probably be how it would look. And um, I've, I've seen this all way too many times. Uh, it's, it's, the goal, I think, is to shame those who would get involved politically and who would call out bad teaching and those kinds of things. Um, and then of course, uh, you, you know, for me personally, I'll just speak for myself because I can't speak for everyone else. For me personally, um, there's, <laughs> if I was gonna try to make money, this isn't what I'd be doing. Um, yeah, I do have a Patreon, it's true. And then, and I, I have that and I was very specific about why when I first started it was because there was certain equipment that I needed to do some of the projects. And now, of course, I'm, I'm helping to make films and that kind of thing. Um, still is going to be ongoing travel expenses and equipment associated with that. Uh, I never intended to do this full time and I'm not doing it full time. Um, I still have uh, a side business and I still have uh, a number of other endeavors that I'm pursuing. Um, this, this has been very helpful for me and I've been able to do more of it because of people who gave on Patreon. Um, but it isn't, it was never to get, and it's not, it's not making me just for people. know. I'm not trying to say I, I'm not disclosing, you know, my financial statements and everything. And I'm not, you know, showing you, Hey, look how poor I am. Feel sorry for me. Cause I, I don't ever want to do that. Um, if, if you, if, if you feel inclined that you want to give to what I'm doing and, and my projects and praise God, if you can't, that's fine too. And if, uh, I remember something Francis Schaeffer said years ago about, you know, someone asked him what happens if people don't give to Labrie? And he says, well, then we downsize, you know, and that's, that's how I feel. Okay, I go back to, you know, fixing, uh, fixing things like I used to, I'll go back to, you know, handyman stuff. I'll go back. I'm honestly, there's part of me that I'm just on an honest personal level here. Um, I think about that sometimes I really enjoyed going out and repairing things, which is what I did for about 10 years. And I miss it sometimes. And this stuff, going through this stuff, I mean, it's sometimes soul ripping. It's just um, to, to go through men sometimes who are heroes or used to be and to see, man, they've compromised. And I'm, I'm gonna need to pick this apart and explain it to people and give them kind of some courage and hope. And I, I want them to understand and to be able to have answers and have the, how I, here's how I would engage it to help them know how maybe they could engage it. Uh, search the Word of God for compare what they're teaching to it. Um, writing a, another book now on this and write the, the chapter on the gospel is what I'm finishing up right now. And it is it is hard. It is very hard to go through some of the stuff of people teaching at evangelical institutions and seeing how they've corrupted the gospel. And um, not something that I think anyone really likes to do. This is and again, I don't know about others, but for me. There's no, I don't see the, the personal, like the selfish, you know, benefit or whatever. It, it's not there for me. And it never was. I blacklisted myself when I came out with my story about Southeastern. Um, there's no way for it. Like with Matt Hall, there's no way I'm ever, I'm never having his position. I don't want it really, but there's never like, I'm not, I can't, you know, rip him down to build myself up or anything like that. Um, it, it doesn't even work that way. It doesn't build my, me up to, to it actually it's caused me a lot of, uh, a lot of people have given me grief about that kind of thing because of how much they respect Al Mohler and they respect Southern. And so, you know, who are you, John, that you're, you know, what are you so smart that you can come out against them? And so, no, it's not me. It's, I'm just, I, I want to point you back to the standard. I want to point you back to, uh, as Martin Luther said, um, you know, reason and scripture. I want to just 
point you back to that as much as I possibly can. Those are the standards. It's not me. I just want to help you lead, lead you down the garden path to see those things if I can, as you know, faulty as I may be. But I, I'm not even planning on doing this forever. This isn't this isn't a long-term thing. This isn't so his what the motives he's attributing to possibly someone like me. Um, they wouldn't apply to me. Now, maybe there's others who, I don't know, do have those motivations. But you see, I, I hope you see how he's communicating on this emotional level. He is trying to um, pull your, he, he's pulling the heartstrings a little bit. There's these evil, angry group of people that for their own self-aggrandizement and their political, um, their, their political agenda, they're willing to just run roughshod over people. And, and, uh, and then, you know, it's their Patreon accounts, apparently, that uh, they're, they're really after filling those up. And they're really after getting you to their conference and stuff. And um, so my point is it's hypocritical, number one. And number two, um, it's just not necessarily accurate. Uh, certainly not accurate across the board. And then number three, it's just, it really is deviating a whole lot from the text he's supposed to be preaching from. And if this is what's passes for preaching at Southern Seminary, and this is supposed to be you know, your, your you know, base camp for exegetical preaching and understanding how to go into a church and preach. I mean, is this, is this really, I mean, I encourage you, go listen to the whole thing. Is this really what, where you want to learn? If you're someone looking to go to seminary, is this who you want to learn from? Um, I would say no. I would say I learned a hard lesson going to Southeastern. I realized afterward um, all the money I spent and what I didn't really gain. And I, and I thought I would gain. And so that's my challenge um, to those considering the possibility of maybe going to a place like Southern. Again, nothing personal here. It's just uh, I do care about people and I do I want them to make wise, informed decisions. Um, it doesn't have to be even decisions I like, but I, I, I want um, I, I think of myself when I was trying to choose seminaries and I you know, there was all sorts of pros and cons depending on where, you know, Southeastern, I'll be honest, when I was going to Southeastern, I thought there's this huge lake there, man, I could just go bass fishing and, and all the time. I thought that was, it's going to be great. And, um, I never went, <laughs> I never went, uh, those are the superficial reasons, but there's all kinds of legitimate reasons that people look at seminaries and, and compare and contrast. And I, I just, I know for me, I wanted to know the word of God well, and I want to know how to communicate it well. And uh, I, I have to say, I don't think it's being, it's not being done that well. And this, this sermon is, it's just, it's not like it's the worst sermon ever, but it's, it's, it's just one example of that. And this is Matt Hall inserting his political agenda into the sermon and then communicating on this sort of emotional, more level. And, and it, it is an us versus them kind of thing. Uh, you know, here, here we are, the moderates, the neutral, the, the, the right motivations kind of, and then there's these evil people trying to pull you apart with their political operations. But that's what Matt Hall's doing. He's the one inserting uh, his own uh, political agenda into a text, into Genesis um, and, uh, and the story of Joseph and his brothers and forgiving them. And uh, so anyway, I just thought I would say that. And I, and I, I would like to end with this, you know, if, if Matt Hall would, um, and I've said this, I think every time I've talked about Matt Hall, which hasn't been that many, but if he would just come out and apologize, just, just own up to it. Just, just like, just like Joseph brothers did with a much more major offense, <laughs> but with, with the things he said that have been absolutely not true, um, that, you know, the famous one is him three times saying how he's a racist because he benefits from the system that allocates privilege to him. I mean, that, that's directly from an understanding of critical race theory. Uh, that, that, that's where he got that. I mean, yeah, sure. It pre, does it predate critical race theory in some way? Yeah. I mean, it's, there's the new left critique. I mean, you, you had certain elements of that in um, the earlier critical theory, but uh, that's where it was systematized. That's where the idea today, where people are getting it. And, um, and, and he's said far more, much more than that. But... Um, if he was willing to just come out and apologize, say, you know what? I was wrong. I was wrong. And I thought about it. And you know what, guys? I'm so sorry that I said that. That's, that's not what sin is. That is a misunderstanding of sin. If it, uh, that's benefiting from a system, supposedly, number one, you know, the critique is way off. That's not, you're not, are you even benefiting from that? But number two, let's say you are, um, it, that, you know what? That's not sin, just passively uh, benefiting and you, you can't do anything about it and, and means you're a racist and stuff, you know, that, that just apologize for it. 
and apologize for all the other things and then move on. And then, you know, and, and then let the chips fall where they may instead of this kind of like you, you have to uh, make some statement against critical race theory that means hardly, that doesn't even engage the criticisms and uh, the concerns and and then pretend like nothing actually happened and pretend the people that have the problem, you know, are the ones that are uh, playing your old videos that many of them have been deleted now from Southern Seminary's website. So that's what I would encourage Matt Hall to do. Be like Joseph's brothers and apologize. Uh, and you don't have to apologize to me. It's not apologizing to me, but just humble yourself to the people that pay, pay the bills because Matt Hall is getting paid. It might not be through Patreon. It might, might be through a much more... Because... Um, <laughs> But look, Patreon's the only way that some of us can pretty much fund what we're trying to do here. Uh, he has the mecha way greater, far complex, um, you know, efficient mechanisms to fund his job. So, so he's getting paid by people and donors, you know, ladies and men and children, even in some cases in the SBC, giving even their offerings and stuff. I mean, there, there's so many, um, as far as I understand, I mean, but it's also students with tuition. It's also people that are paying for the, uh, the endowment and stuff. So, so he's getting paid and just, just apologize to them. Just, I'm sorry. And, um, and I think they, they would be willing to forgive. And I know I would, I know if I was in those positions and I had been wronged in some way, uh, or misled, I would be more than willing in a heartbeat to forgive that kind of thing. And that's one of the questions that I've, I, I encourage people asking why, why haven't those previous statements, uh, that so many of you are familiar with, um, why haven't they? And if you're not, just go to YouTube and type in Matt Hall racism or something like that, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Uh, why haven't those things been apologized for? And and that would be that maybe a little bit better of if you're going to try to draw a parallel between the story of Joseph and his brothers, maybe that would be one. So that that's all I had to say uh, about that. Uh, I thought it was interesting, but you know, it started off. I was kind of I thought it was kind of funny. Because I was like, just name names and, you know, just be a man and name the names. And then it's ended up, as I've talked about it, I've, I've gotten more sad about it. But um, tonight, uh, if if there are still tickets available, which I don't know if there are, you can go to the info section, click on the link, come to the Paint the Wall Black premiere. Uh, well, it's, it's not a premiere, but the showing of Paint the Wall Black at Liberty University. Uh, Juan Riesco is going to be there. I'm going to be there. A uh, number of folks are going to be there, and I, I hope it just blesses you and benefits you and encourages you, and that's that's really the goal. 